Today's video is sponsored by Midwest Photo. Midwest Photo not only stocks the latest and greatest in photography, but their used inventory is always growing, which is great for us film shooters. So if you'd like to look for anything in 35mm, medium format, large format, instant film, their used inventory is always growing, and you can even trade in some of your gear towards something else. And if you'd like to get a free quote on that gear, you can do so in-store in Columbus or at impex.com. Today we're going to take a closer look at the Olympus Pin FT. This is a 35mm half frame SLR. Half frame meaning for every single 35mm frame you would normally get, you're going to get two vertical frames side by side within that same space. So you're getting 72 shots as opposed to 36. And I've always wanted to use a half frame camera, especially an SLR like this, because there are a lot of half frame cameras out there that are like scale focusing, zone focusing. Uh, this one is an actual true SLR. There's a uh, mirror inside here so you can actually see exactly what you're getting through the lens. And that just makes a big difference in terms of just day-to-day -day shooting, at least for me. So uh, we're going to take a closer look at the camera itself. Uh, I picked this up from Midwest Photo Exchange. I don't get to keep the camera. I was very seriously considering buying it just because I've really enjoyed using it so much. But I've got enough going on right now as it is, and I've got enough cameras. So I'm going to take this back later, uh, probably this week. But I wanted to go ahead and share my thoughts just because it's been so much fun to use. So if you're interested in picking this up, this and the other lenses as well, it's all going back to Midwest Photo Exchange, so you can pick it up there if you're interested. But yeah, this has been a lot of fun to use. As I mentioned, it's an SLR. You can change the lenses on here, and you have full manual control of the camera. The Pin FT came around in the late 60s. I believe it was after the Pin and then the Pin F. The Pin FT was the third model, and uh, this allowed you to have a built-in light meter on the inside. It uses the EV scale. Uh, you also have a self-timer here. You have full manual control of your shutter speed everything from 1 500th of a second all the way down to one second and then bulb uh, you have the same little ISO dial to change your film speed which is built into the shutter speed dial similar to a typical SLR you know of this style but it's located right here on the front of the camera so the camera has this really nice sleek and flat design up on top and it's really really nice like I love the design of the camera itself. Um, I didn't know how I would enjoy using that shutter speed dial on the front, and it doesn't bother me at all. Uh, so I actually kind of like that. I don't know if I'd want that on every camera, but it didn't bother me like I thought it would. Uh, the film advance on the back here, it sits pretty flush, although you have a little bit of a uh, kind of bump to it, so that way on the very end you can kind of just rest your thumb there and have a good grip on the camera. But uh, yeah, it's super nice. Uh, the shutter speed button, or sorry, the shutter release button is uh, completely flush as well, which it does have a threaded cable release spot there. But it's nice and flush, and it's just this little rectangle shaped shutter button, which isn't common either, but... Uh, I actually found it to be like perfectly comfortable. You just kind of rest your whole finger along that edge and it just it just works. Uh, the shutter sound on this thing, I don't know why it sounds so different or what I love so much about it. It just sounds like sharp. I don't know what it is. You can hear it again. Yeah, it's just, it's super satisfying. Uh, the viewfinder on the camera is also vertical. So because you're getting, you know, two frames for each space of a regular 35 millimeter negative, they're split vertically, so you have a vertical viewfinder in here when you're shooting. And for me, I love that because I shoot vertical almost all the time whenever I'm shooting, uh, especially portraits. I mean, if I'm just like walking around, I normally see a lot more compositions vertically than I do horizontally. Uh, maybe if I'm shooting more documentary stuff with my kids, I tend to shoot horizontally. But for something like this, uh, I was shooting a lot of diptychs, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. But um, it was nice having, you know, two photos side by side going together and shooting everything vertically that way. So I didn't shoot a single photo with this thing horizontally. So uh, it was super just easy to use for me and really comfortable. So I really, really like that about it. Uh, on the top here, you also have your uh, film rewind lever. And then on the bottom, just like you would with most SLRs, press this button in before you wind it and that's all you really need to do. Uh, you have a cable mount, or sorry, a tripod mount on the bottom of the camera and also a spot for the battery. Now I don't remember exactly what kind of battery this takes. Um, from what I've read online, uh, the batteries that were made for this, it uses one of the older batteries that are no longer being manufactured. Although you can kind of like rig something together to still, you know, use the meter in here. But I just shot it without a battery, without a meter, just doing everything Sunny 16 and uh, it works totally fine for that. You don't have to have the battery to have 
perfectly accurate shutter speeds. They're all fully mechanical, so that's really, really nice. Um, like I mentioned, you do have other lenses here. So this is the 38mm uh, f1.8. This is actually the only lens I used when I had the camera. Um, they sent two other lenses along with it that they had in stock, but I really like the 38mm f1.8, and you can see just how small this thing is. But inside there, you can see the little mirror. It's just this tiny little mirror and tiny focusing screen. Um, 38mm f1.8. We also have the 25mm f4, which is a much wider lens. From what I was told, this is actually the more sought after lens. Uh, this one tends to be a little bit more expensive and a little bit more uh, rare, I guess but I didn't use it for anything, I apologize. And then we also have this zoom lens, which looks amazing on this camera because it's so much bigger. Like it's actually longer than the camera itself when you have the cap and the hood attached. But this is a 50 to 90 millimeter f3.5 zoom lens. Uh, again, I didn't use this just because I was really comfortable with just using the 38. This is like your standard lens on this camera, but you do have other lens options there. So if you want to get wild and, you know, have a full kit, there are options out there. But for me personally, I just used the 38 millimeter and, uh, the fact that I had f1.8, that was great for me shooting a lot of photos of the family indoors, but yeah, uh, just really versatile kind of kit. You know, you can really build an entire kit for this little half frame camera and it's so tiny. Uh, being able to just carry this around, yeah, it's it's super, super nice. I barely noticed it, and it's just super enjoyable to use. Again, everything is just nice and solid and sharp, and yeah, if you can't tell, I really don't want to return this thing. Uh, on the side here, you also have a flash sync spot, so that way if you do want to shoot off-camera flash with this, you can do so. Um, it doesn't have any kind of, you know, cold shoe for you to mount a, a flash to or anything like that. Um, but, you know, I would imagine there's probably some people out there that have made little brackets where you can just have it basically built onto the bottom of the camera and then a flash just set up right here off to the side. I'm sure people have done that in the past before, though, but, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all there is about the camera itself. Like I said, it's, it's very simple and minimal and... I just love the small, sleek design of this thing. But uh, now I want to kind of talk about some of the photos that I've made with the camera and just how I decided to shoot the camera overall. When it comes to shooting the camera, I really wanted to focus on shooting diptychs. And if you aren't familiar with this word, this, I believe it's a Greek word, but it originally comes from the concept of having two pieces of artwork that go together that are basically attached. You know, you'd have two panels of artwork and they would be, you know, attached with a hinge in the middle so that way it could fold up unfold and you have these two pieces that go together whereas in photography we just commonly know it as just pairing two photos together and I shoot diptychs a lot with other cameras and oftentimes they're not really consecutive photos it's just two photos maybe from that roll and they they work really well side by side um, with this I really wanted to kind of challenge myself with shooting for every subject that I found I had to shoot two photos no more no less uh, one after another, just so that way they, they come in a pair. And when it came to me looking for things to shoot, I had to look and make sure, is there two ways to shoot this or two ways that I want to shoot this? You know, I feel like there's, there's always more than one way to photograph something, but, uh, that's kind of the mindset I had going into it. I just really like the idea of shooting intentionally and making sure that, you know, no cropping, no picking different photos from the entire roll and, you know, putting them together. I wanted to scan everything in, showing the film border, showing that these two photos were in fact consecutive. And, uh, it was just a fun challenge for me. That's really all it was, was just me trying to challenge myself and see what I could come up with. Uh, some photos worked and some photos didn't, uh, especially with my kids, you know, they can run and move and turn and change expression, uh, way quicker than I can. So it was definitely challenging to try and time that just right whenever I was shooting photos of them, but still it was a lot of fun. And I think it was a good exercise in storytelling whenever I'm trying to shoot two photos back to back and uh, just change up the angles and change up different things that might help tell the story because sometimes it's hard to tell an entire story actually all the time it's hard to tell an entire story with just one frame but when you have two it's just a different kind of mindset, and it really got me thinking, uh, even in terms of using other cameras as well. Um, this was just a really fun experiment, and although I want to keep the camera, uh, I think just using it for a very small amount of time, it really got me thinking, and I think that 
kind of ties into that other question of just trying out different cameras and how they make you shoot and how it makes you think. Um, that's one thing I love about film and film cameras. So uh, this was a super enjoyable thing for me, and I'm actually really happy with some of the photos I made. Some of the subjects, I would shoot things a little bit further back, and then I would try and get a little bit closer for the second photo, or vice versa. Or you could do other things like panoramas, where you can shoot however many frames you want and just shoot, turn, shoot you know, and just kind of build a panorama that way. And I think if you scan that in, showing the film border and everything and showing the, all the separate frames, uh, it's just a really cool look. You can do a lot of things like that. You can do focus shifts. So maybe the first photo you're focusing on the foreground, second photo you're focusing on the, the background. There's just a lot of uh, possibility and creativity that, you know, you have there with a half frame camera. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, if you're on Instagram, I would definitely check out the uh, half frame club. They have just a, an actual account and a hashtag as well that people contribute to. Um, but a lot of really cool work on there. So definitely check that out. I looked that up whenever I was shooting with this, and it was full of inspiration. So really, really cool stuff there. But uh, yeah, I've thoroughly enjoyed this camera a lot. It's been so much fun to use. And again, I'm going to be returning it. But if you're interested in picking it up, it's going to be available at Midwest Photo Exchange. So uh, yeah, definitely check that out. But that's it for today. That's it for the Pin FT. If you guys have any questions about this, camera or thoughts of your own or maybe any other half frame cameras that are out there definitely let me know in the comments below so thank you guys for everything thank you for watching and i'll see you guys next time